me. Oh, guys, I've done a whole entire intro. Um, <laughs> but with that, um, welcome to this webinar, jointly co-organized by the Adolescent and Youth Constituency, um, the Civil Society Coordinating Group um, for the Global Financing Facility, also hosted by the partnership, as well as its um, Adolescent and Youth subgroup. Um, the webinar today aims to facilitate adolescent and youth engagement in the GFS. Um, through our conversation, we hope to do a couple of things. One is to provide you with information on what the GFS is, what it seeks to achieve, how it's structured, and how and why adolescents have been engaged to date. Um, and all of this with, with the hopes of facilitating or inciting uh, youth engagement in, in the GFF processing countries. So we're going to go straight into three presentations today. Um, we're going to ask that questions be held until after the presentation so that um, you can get a full view uh, before we, we start to answer these. Um, throughout the presentations and throughout the entire webinar, please feel free to make any comments um, that you want to make in the chat box. We will keep track of those. If you think of questions, you just want to write them down, we'll answer them later on. Um, so our three presentations today are going to be first up um, a GFF 101, so an overview of how the GFF works and what it does, provided by Kosi Zun, who is the uh, youth rep of the GFF Investors Group. Um, we're then going to go into a presentation of an analysis that was conducted this year on youth engagement, adolescent and youth engagement in the GFF on how this engagement can be strengthened. Um, that presentation will also provide you with some of the, the, um, the tools and resources that can be used to, to facilitate engagement in countries. And that'll be done by Susanna Hurd, um, who's a VP at Global Health Visions, um, and who's also a member of the steering committee of the uh, Civil Society Group. Finally, um, Patrick will give us a, a sort of paint us painting of what this actually looks like in country. So he'll give us an experience of how the Uganda Youth and Adolescent Health Forum um, has engaged in the process. And Patrick is also a member of the steering committee of the Civil Society Coordinating Group. Um, and he'll bring the first two presentations together for you. Um, we're going to start off with a short film uh, developed by Evidence for Action that summarizes a bit um, about youth, adolescent, and youth engagement in the GFF, and then we'll dive into the presentations. Um, with that, the video. I think we need sound. Hi, I'm Afia. I'm a youth advocate. When reproductive or general adolescent health services are good, young people like me need choice for health, more productive lives. Decisions about people are one of the world's population when experienced in plenty of health. We are the health workers, policy makers, and researchers, not just of the future, but of now. Why extra attention on youth is needed. We want to sit at the table where decisions about the future have to be. We want to be part of the global financing system. It is a country led up for reproductive, maternal, newborn, child, and adolescent health that happens at community, national, and global level. We want to meaningfully engage with PFF and contribute to its success. And youth fandom to the GFF Civil Society Engagement Strategy gives us a way we can engage with the GFF, but highlights is more to be done. We to give the health workers, policy makers, and researchers on board by spreading a country representation for the youths they don't suit, the GFF Investors Group. To learn from my experiences, be willing to exchange knowledge with us. We use networks that go beyond borders. Oh. 
all young people in the U.S. will drive the success and accelerate progress towards better health for women, adolescents, children, and babies. There is nothing for us without us. Thank you so much for that video and to E4A for produce that. That was based on the inputs of a number of youth organizations um, and really reflects the importance of engaging communities and constituencies when one develops plans that affect their health. Um, so we'll dive straight into the GFF and, and COSI online. Um, I'm turning to you to provide the group with a, a bit of a, um, a more in-depth view on what the GFF is and what it does. Thank you very much, Paddy. Um, so today we're going to be going through the GFF 101, as we like to call it, and um, a quick outline of the presentation today. We're going to be talking about the GFF in a nutshell, what the GFF aims to achieve, the key areas of government commitments, the key elements of the GFF, and of course the GFF partnership as a whole. trends led to the creation of the GFF. Um, the first one was insufficient progress on MNCH plus nutrition, and the fact that traditional sources of financing were not enough to close the gap. The second was the fact that development assistance is at record levels, but it's only a fraction of private financing from remittances and the indirect investment. Domestic financing far exceeds external resources in this case. The overall objective of the GFF was is to end preventable maternal, newborn, child, and adolescent deaths and improve the health, nutrition, and quality of life of women, adolescents, and children. And this is aimed to achieve through ensuring the universal access to sexual reproductive health and rights services with a focus on nutrition, the balance of stunting and malnutrition, and universal health coverage. The GFF believes ultimately that closing the financial gap would prevent 24 to 28 million deaths by 2030. Next slide, please. Um, as we all know, the GFF mostly focuses on the national level, and the key areas of government commitment includes in the focal point, who is often a high-level government official, who has the ability to drive the national change process. Um, the GFF Secretary then provides technical assistance in form of a GFF liaison officer to support the focal point. Um, the next one will be in developing and preparing an investment case, which is a tool for creating a consensus around the high, a set of high-priority reforms and the scaling up of services to advance the country's universal health coverage agenda. Um, also, in creating all of this, it's important to create a platform and actually chair it using an existing platform so it's not new in country, a platform that is already in existence and already has some background work ongoing that will serve as a coordinator, coordination in preparing of the investment case and create mutual accountability for its successful implementation. Next is um, the government actually increasing its domestic resources within the limits of fiscal space, the national public resources allocated for health specifically. Ensuring equity, specific, ensuring equity by taking specific steps to increase access to health services and financial protection to those who are often not rich. And finally, using data decision making and creating mutual accountability. This requires training national routine data systems and would involve the willingness to share national data. It requires signing a data sharing agreement. There is also the willingness to commit to the International Development Association and the International Bank for Resource and Development Resources for Health. The GFF Structured Fund will provide a catalytic grant that is linked to this resources as co-financing, 
And currently, the matching ratio for the ID and IBRD to the GFF trust fund is a ratio of seven to one. the government leadership, the stakeholder engagement, evidence and knowledge, technical assistance, and financing. The inputs translate into activities which include strengthening country platforms, developing prioritized, costed, evidence-based investment cases, completing financial analysis, and identifying a set of priority health financial reforms, combining investments at both the national and the global level, Implementing projects that finance the investment case through the World Bank, with co-financing from the GFF grant and others available to the country, and strengthening data systems and analytic core capacity. Also, most importantly, strengthening advocacy capacity within the country. Next slide, please. Four countries are eligible to um, receive the GFF funds. However, right now the GFF supports specific low and middle income countries in Africa, Asia, and Latin America, which is um, being shown right now. And these are countries with the highest maternal, newborn, and child mortality burden, and have a large gap in financing to address these challenges. So those are the priority countries for the GFF and these 36 are the ones currently receiving um, any form of support from the GFF. Next slide, please. In strengthening country coordination, we have the in-country roles and the role of the GFS Secretariat slash the World Bank, the GFS Secretariat associated with the World Bank. Um, the first role is the role of the government focal point shares the country platform and leads the country-driven process. Um, the other is the liaison officer who supports the government focal point in the functioning of the country platform to ensure timely progress of activities. Um, I think in recent time we have um, developed a list of country liaison officers for um, countries to be able to see who their liaison officers are and reach out to them to ensure that there's um, smooth sailing of advocacy efforts in country. On the GFF Secretariat and World Bank side, there is the GFF focal point, who is the point of contact for the country in the GFF Secretariat. And then the project tax team leaders, who oversees the World Bank project and is responsible for its deliverables agreed upon in the GFF strategy note. And then the technical area specialist in the GFF Secretariat provide assistance in different focus areas based on priorities set in the investment cases. For example, in nutrition, financing, monitoring and evaluation, SRHR, and civil society registration and vital statistics. The country platform brings together government, civil society, the non-for-profit ones, the private sector, key affected populations, multilateral and bilateral agencies, and of course the technical um, agencies, the H6, amongst others. Um, this shows the key um, GFF financiers and um, partners who work, with, including the civil society representative on the GFF and other partners. Well Go ahead, go ahead, Kosi. To everyone else who's not speaking, please put yourselves on mute. Okay, sorry. Okay, so <laughs> this, this includes all partners and financiers, um, including civil society organizations who are oriented on the GFF investors group and work hand in hand in um, ensuring that the GFF's goals and objectives comes to play by the year 2030. Thank you.
Thank you for that presentation, Kosi, which was very comprehensive. Hopefully, um, it, partners have, have understood um, the concept and, and we'll see whether there are any questions in a couple of minutes. Um, before we do that, now that Kosi's laid out what the objectives are and, and how the GFF functions in countries, we're going to call on Susanna to tell us um, whether, why, and how uh, adolescents and, and um, young people have been um, engaged in um, GFF process. Susanna? Thanks, Kadi and Kosi, for that great overview. Um, and good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for having me on. Um, so, just a bit of background about um, why we decided to do this analysis. Um, so, to better understand youth engagement in the GFF process and to help inform recommendations and priorities for strengthening youth engagement, um, PMNCH, on behalf of the Civil Society Coordinating Group um, for the GFF and the GFF Youth Constituency, um, asked Global Health Visions to, to do this uh, review of existing literature um, and documentation around meaningful youth engagement, and then to compile some highlights uh, of youth engagement uh, in four countries. Um, so we looked at Nigeria, Senegal, Sierra Leone, and Uganda. Um, we know that youth engagement uh, has varied significantly uh, from country to country. So we really wanted to document some examples of, of what was happening and pull from the existing literature to help really make the case and contribute to evidence-based recommendations around how to improve meaningful adolescent and youth engagement in the GFF. Um, next slide. So um, there is quite a lot of literature documentation out there about how to successfully, meaningfully engage young people. And so we knew it was important to pull some of those key lessons together uh, in one place. Um, so just a few of the highlights. Um, youth engage engagement should be rights-based, safe, and transparent, free from coercion, um, grounded in child and youth rights. Um, it needs to take place in a safe environment where young people are respected as equals and their views are valued. Um, there needs to be a clear framework for young people to voice their concerns um, and young people should be regularly consulted on whether or not they feel that their opinions and ideas are being valued and effectively incorporated. Um, and also if they're feeling supported both financially and as a contributing member of the group. Um, there must be inclusive language that are um, that's rooted in equality and diversity, um, ensuring girls and women, for example, have equal representation that should be central um, and also respectful of all young people's varying backgrounds and identities. And then it's important to continually build the skills of young people through mentorship, support and learning opportunities as part of meaningful engagement as well. Um, and just a quote here that's relevant um, from one of our uh, interviewees in Sierra Leone, youth should not be passive be beneficiaries, they need to be active, let them lead to bring together civil society organizations and other stakeholders to share their needs. Let's make them independent so we can see how we can tap their, into their potential. Next slide. Um, so both civil society and youth have had to work hard to secure meaningful engagement in the GFF at both global and country levels. Um, and we've made a lot of progress and also recognize, you know, that there's still a ways to go. Um, most uh, GFF countries do not have an official youth seat or youth representation on the government led multi stakeholder country platform. Uh, we know, for example, that Malawi does, but, but most of the other countries do not. Um, and the ways that young people are engaging is different in each country. So, for example, um, in Sierra Leone, there are youth coalitions that are actively working within the civil society coalition um, to engage in support the GFF. Um, they had a youth training and consultation on the GFF, and they're working really closely with civil society there. Um, but obviously, very limited funding and um, youth coalitions that are really calling for some of their own spaces and funding so that their voice can be heard independently. Um, uh, we have Patrick, who's going to speak about the Uganda case and, and Kosi about the um, what's happening in Nigeria. Um, but we know uh, across the board, 
that young people bring a unique and very special value add to the GFF. Um, it can make the GFF more sustainable, um, innovative, accountable, and ensure that it's re reaching one of the most critical beneficiaries with services and supplies that meet their needs. Um, we also have seen really common challenges across um, many of the countries, um, including the representation piece, how youth are being represented uh, in the country platform, um, how civil society is supporting and engaging young people, um, resources to support meaningful engagement. So obviously, you know, it's one thing to, to ask um, youth-led organizations to participate in a meeting, but, but there are significant challenges if there are no resources provided for, for travel and time it takes to really, you know, do that effectively. Um, and then uh, we've also heard reports of, of cultural norms that are really uh, persistent across a lot of countries that really equate age with expertise, which puts young people at a disadvantage. Um, next slide, please. So again, just wanted to highlight a few quotes from, uh, from holders um, across, uh, including young people and civil society and um, representatives from the GFF. Um, the first one, the members think that because they were all youths at one point themselves, that they know about the youth issues and problems, but we're starting to see a paradigm shift. So that kind of speaks to that, um, you know, deeply rooted, perhaps misperceptions that, that people need to be older in order to, to really provide uh, meaningful input and, and, but glad to hear that we're, you know, people are starting to sort of wake up and, and, and recognize the unique value that young people add. Um, the next one, while they are integrated within the civil society coalition, their voice may be drowned. They would benefit from having a separate space structure, work plan, and representation. Um, and the HR constituency has the same weight as other constituencies, which gives us an even voice, and then we have a balanced seat at the table. It's a really important um, lesson and effective um, to think about as we're looking at youth engagement in the GFF. And then in Africa, we still believe that elders must be the only leaders. We are not seen as being intelligent and resourceful in decision making. So again, just speaking to some of those challenges that, that young people face. Uh, next slide, please. So where do we go from here? We took um, the, the lessons from, uh, from this analysis and um, uh, a lot of the work that the youth group and youth constituency um, engaged in the GFF so far has done to, to from their own experiences in countries to, to build out this um, GFF adolescent and youth action plan. The goal of action plan is that a unified group of young people working to see that the global facility works to advance the health and well-being of adolescents and youth living in GFF countries. Um, see that there are seven uh, objectives to Support this overarching goal um, involving young people and youth led organizations in design, planning, implementation, and monitoring, building the capacity of youth representatives, leveraging existing country level structures to engage young people, um, strengthening existing adolescent and youth coalitions, enhancing communication with people, leveraging social innovation, improving private sector engagement. Next slide, please. So this just provides a, a quick snapshot. Um, there's a link um, which uh, where you can see the full action plan. Um, and basically the action plan breaks down very specific global and country level actions into four categories, um, global representation and engagement. So you can see kind of a snapshot of that on the right side of the slide. Um, there's a section on knowledge sharing and capacity building, a section on integrating youth into national CSO coalitions and action plans, and then a section on building an evidence base. Um, and then uh, there's also sort of a set number of priorities that are really um, have been outlined for this year um, around mapping and coalition building, advocacy for youth representation and meaningful engagement at both global and country levels, capacity building on civic engagement, coalition building, accountability, and budget advocacy and then budget tracking activities and health financing advocacy. And again, these priorities are meant to really reflect 
what we've been hearing from um, young people and uh, youth-led organizations that are that are trying and working hard to engage in the GFF. Um, so please do take a look at the action plan. As I said, it really kind of outlines some some specific activities and um, and some representatives who are already working on some of these things. So um, if you have further interest or want to know how to get involved, um, that's a really good starting point to see what actions are in there, activities, and um, and who are the point people. Uh, responsible people working on those various actions. I'll stop there and, and uh, turn it back over to Kadi. Um, Susanna, for, for that, and I um, notice in the comment boxes that we have um, some people who are already familiar with the process, and so I'm looking forward to this conversation. I'm going to dive directly in and, and see if Patrick can, uh, can give us some color um, and tell us what has been the experience in Uganda. Okay, thank you very much, Susanna. Thank you, Kosi, and thank you, Kadi. I hope everybody can hear me, right? Uh, Kadi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <clears throat> Lovely. So my name is Patrick Mwesi J, and I'm, I work with the Uganda Youth and Adolescent Health Forum. And I'm also a member of the PMNC Adolescent and Youth Constituency and I also a youth representative on the Civil Society Coordinating Group for EFF. And um, been, uh, I've, I've quite been so much interested in this whole EFF process as an individual, but also as an institution in Uganda and we have really been making a lot of progress, especially in terms of positioning, uh, in terms of mobilizing, amplifying voices of young people and positioning them to influence not only GFF as per se, but broadly the broader investment case, well, Uganda's investment case for reproductive, maternal, newborn, child, and adolescent health. Uh, so, I mean, like, just like many other young people from different countries at some point were also like stuck in terms of like what we start from how do we engage what is this process but what we did is that we do, we took an initiative on our own to get things started using the little and available resources that we have in our own existing institutions so in january at the beginning of this year we worked with the ministry of health uh, the Department for Reproductive Maternity Newborn and Child Health and uh, uh, the CSO coordinating uh, a coalition on, on, on GFF and RMNCH in Uganda. And we organized kind of like an orientation meeting for young people on GFF processes. And, you know, so we brought together about 20 youth led organizations and like literally tried to take them through what GFF is. And I mean, like we reached out to people like Suzanne and others who are able like, to share with us some information and you know, putting together some information that we're able to share with young people. And uh, we reached out to the coordinator by then, uh, of CSO coordinator, CSO coalition coordinator on GFF processes, which is World Vision. And they came and you know, like shared with us how civil society organization at country level engage and get involved in the process. And we tried to lobby for strong and meaningful engagement of young people and since then, uh, we have gone further to um, like really take on the process. Recently, we had a very big RMNCH Youth Symposium where we were actually able to uh, secure some funding and support from the GFF resources that Ministry of Health is holding. So Ministry of Health was able to uh, support this youth symposium that broadly looking at um, uh, you know, uh, young people's indicators, goals, and targets around the RMN search investment case. And um, as I speak, we have um, just recently um, been uh, in discussions with the World Bank GFF team in Uganda and Ministry of Health, and they want to support us to convene training or an engagement with uh, results around the results based financing model because we told them we don't understand this process and we know that there are opportunities to like you know look at some of the indicators especially the indicators for adolescents and young people and when we wrote to them they were very positive and they have to 
finance and engagement of, uh, of about 50 young people from different youth-led organizations try to understand the results-based financing model and then go to the districts where they are operating try to engage the GFF-supported districts in terms of how they are benefiting from this model but also how they are prioritizing uh, achieving adolescent and youth related indicators and targets. We have also been working together as a team. We developed a proposal for uh, for, uh, for the GFF uh, TSO hub. Uh, I know most of you know about it. And uh, and uh, we submitted it. We've been able to get comments from, from the team leading the hub, and they really encouraged us to strengthen our uh, working relationships with all the different groups of young people jointly submitted a proposal as different groups of young people and we are proposing things like um, you know developing uh, an advocacy action plan we want to do some mapping first to try to analyze and understand uh, what gff like what gff resources are doing at district level so we want to select like two three districts that are supported by the gff and then from there we try to you know like uh, do some research to understand the uptake, demand, and 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 access to youth-friendly services with more focus around family planning and and and, and maternal health. And then we want to use those results, the findings as well, to develop like an advocacy youth action plan um, that will help young people to you know like know if they want to engage and do accountability and advocacy for GFF what are some of the activities, what are some of the things that they could focus attention on. So we believe that when we get this funding, which we are positive we are going to get, uh, that we shall be able to develop this advocacy action plan, and then we shall launch it into a, uh, into a document. The Ministry of Health has already given us a lot of heads up in supporting us. Launch it, and then we be able to train young people on how to use it, and then young people can start using it for their accountability and advocacy for GFF processes. And then we, uh, we've also developed like um, recently a policy brief around fulfilling young people's contraceptive needs. Uh, literally, we try to like look at how uh, government of Uganda has achieved targets that it set out in the family planning state implementation plan and um, trying to review like the previous um, a status reports for the last three years to see is progress really matching the targets and the indicators set for adolescents and young people. And so we did some very brief analysis and came up with a policy brief, which we presented to Minister of Health at a very big engagement. So that's how we've been working as a team, as young people in Uganda. And uh, the only magic I can tell you if you're a young person on this panel listening in is that you honestly do not, might not want to wait be told what to do and how to do it, but you might just want to use the available resources and spaces that you have. Interest yourself because all these resources are online, especially like the documents, and then use the space that you have to just like get started. And then many other opportunities will find you along the way. Thank you so much. Wonderful one to, to hear. Um, about the process, I think, for organizing yourselves in, in terms of, of trying to organize mappings, bringing the partners together and, and, and reaching out to the key focal points, but then also um, to hear about some of the focus areas that young people are taking up, which are at, around advocacy, around accountability, and, and capacity building for, for the coalition. It's also refreshing to hear, and, and we've seen this, at least for some civil society organizations that have been able to leverage some of the of funds in countries, um, but but it's a, a pleasure to hear that it's happened for young people as well in, in Uganda. Um, with that, I know this has been a little bit. Um, I wonder whether any of the um, colleagues on the call have any specific questions uh, for clarification, one, because we didn't open up for that, but also just around the, the process that might not have been answered by now.
I think in addition to in addition, sorry, to opening up for questions um, to the panelists, I in particular have a question of the different participants on the call, which I hope uh, a number of, of our youth-led organizations, and it's about um, your level of knowledge in the GFF and, and your engagement. So if anyone wants to so on whether they have been engaged in the GFF process to date, uh, I'd like, we'd like to hear that as well. It's a quiet group. Okay, if we don't have any questions, I do want to take us to the next slide. Um, to point to some of the ways in which you can you can get engaged. Um, as Patrick, I think that um, there are a couple of things that that, that um, youth can do to start engaging in this conversation. I think one of our takeaway messages we just had this webinar in, in French, um, and Susanna will have pointed this out from her analysis, is that there is a recognition of the value add of adolescents and youth. Um, engagement in the, the policy making process, but also in the implementation and, and then accountability related um, efforts. And this is something that we heard not only from young people, but also from the liaison officers and, and, and the Ministry of Health focal points. Um, you have um, you, you have a, a specific knowledge of what some of the challenges are and some what some of the successful policies might be related to adolescent health. Um, and and there is a view that, you, that your contribution is useful. So I think the starting point is that, and, and while processes are being put in place, able youth seats on country platforms and so forth, um, Patrick's point about just, just running with it, I think is one um, that you want to take in, in terms of um, identifying who it is that you need to talk to and, and, and where you can um, make a difference. So linked to that specifically, um, a couple of places where you can get information. Uh, Susanna mentioned the Civil Society Coordinating Group, uh, which operates as a Google group and brings together about 300 um, civil society representatives that have an interest in the GFF. Um, that group has a, a subgroup of youth-specific organizations, so perhaps joining that um, would be the, the first um, entry point to getting a, a bit of information. Um, what we heard from civil society organizations at the start of the GFS process was that difficulties in accessing information um, compromised their ability to engage in the process. So, so um, you can either email me and I can, I'll put my um, email in, in the link box or just tell us in the comment box that you would like to be added to those groups and we can definitely do that. Um, secondly, uh, finding resources. So um, it seems like Anna's pointed us to um, the list of government and secretarial uh, Secretary at Focal Points that is available on the GFF website. Um, you'll have the latest publicly available information on the investment cases in the state countries. Um, the Google group uh, that we have, the Civil Society Coordinating Group, has an associated Google Drive that prints out a number of documents that are related to civil society and youth participation. And so you'll have access to the engagement strategy, the implementation plans, the AY addendum, the AY action plan, um, and also any resources that civil society are developing that facilitate engagement. Um, so having access to that Google Drive as well and, and looking into that um, will be helpful. And, and I have the link on, on the slide, but we'll also um, put it in, in the comment box if that's helpful. Um, and what that will do is in addition, for instance, to the ministry and the liaison officer um, uh, contact details, it'll also provide you with contact details for civil society focal points, which will provide you with required information. Um, and we're also trying to compile um, a list of, they probably aren't called youth focal points to date because they don't have formal titles and associations with platforms, but youth in these countries that are trying to lead efforts 
around engagement in the GFF. Um, so hopefully you can already get that information rolling and start to see how you can engage in, in this process in countries. Um, Amy, uh, yes, we'll share and the recording for, for this presentation as well as the presentation itself so that you have all, all of the links there. I'm going to give maybe a couple of minutes um, for people to see just if they have last minute questions. I'd be happy to um, cut this off a little early, but we'll want to loop back to Posey, Susanna, and, and Patrick just to see if they have any final words, if, if they feel like we've missed anything out. Thank you very much, Kadi. We just had a voice to what Kadi has said. I would like to encourage the young people, particularly those who are affiliated to a youth serving organization in country, to reach out to their government focal points and try to see what level of implementation the GFF is at the country level, and also understand what the government is um, aspiring to use the funds they are getting from the World Bank and other external sources for. It's really important that we're following up through our advocacy and ensuring that the government is prioritizing not just the general maternal health, but also prioritizing younger women in this narrative. Thank you very much and all the best in your endeavors. Thank you, Kosi. Yeah, I'll just yeah, I'll just follow on that to say um you know when when I uh spoke with different stakeholders as part of the um kind of landscape analysis. You know, for the most part, I think there was really positive feedback about youth engagement and, and even in the countries where it's not been great so far, uh, I, I think people, um, you know, including the, um, you know, liaison officers and and um, civil society organizations, others outside of uh, youth led organizations recognize kind of some of the challenges and and um, and I think that there's a lot of opportunity to to make things better, and that people are sort of open to it, but need just need a little push to 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 get there. Um, and and so I found it, you know, just having those conversations with people, like to ask how they're how they're thinking about engaging young people. Usually, that helps to kind of open the door to a discussion, and um, you know, working closely with with civil society, who, like I said, there's been you know a lot of a lot of places where civil society has had to go through a lot of these steps to to really strengthen engagement. So how can we learn from that and now say, okay, we've made some really good progress in civil society engagement, but youth engagement is is really lacking. So let's build off of what we know works already and 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 um and kind of try to try to keep pushing things forward. Like I, I do think that there's um an openness to making things better. Um it just it just takes having um, having folks who are committed to to improve things and move it along, and there's a real need with, you know, to have um, that uh, adolescent and youth perspective on these GFF investments. Like, are they actually um, geared towards and and meeting the needs and providing uh, funding for the right types of services? So we need that critical perspective on what the GFF is focusing focusing on in each country. Thank you for that, Susanna. Patrick? For myself, what I can say is that, I mean, like, GFF processes continue to get more complicated for young people, especially because being young is a transition. So today you're there, tomorrow you move. So when you come as young, when you get in space, you, you find this whole new process, but what I can say is that there is a lot of information available on, on, online. Mm -hmm. uh, at country level, if you go to your Ministry of Health, there is a department that is definitely in charge of this GFF processes, so you can just approach them. Or within your civil society spaces, just identify the different civil society organizations that are working the processes and just like go there your space, sit on the table and say that contribution to make 
because these are resources coming into your country that affect the health, that are trying to address issues that affect the health and well-being of the young people that you make noise for on a daily basis. Like just like literally go there, claim your space and tell them that I want to be on the table. I want to be on the, the technical working groups. I, I have time. I'm free. You know, I can engage and you know work within your space, your organization, and just the space. I, I mean, like just check it up. And then when these guys see you doing stuff, they're gonna come to you. For us, they have come to us, and Ministry of Health come to us. World Vision recently was doing is doing like a big, you know, um, evaluation and study, and they had to look for us because they wanted our perspective on this. So if you do something, they will come looking for you. That's all I can say. And like, let's just, for me, I value work at the national level than work at, you know, like so much at, up there in the global level, because work at the national level really helps you to make a lot of impact because action happens at the national level. Thanks. Fully agree, Patrick. Um, and sort of linked to that, I think the ask goes back to, to everyone on this call and, and to you guys to make sure that we are responsive to country needs and that all of these Google groups and, and, and uh, partner groups are um, a space for peer-to-peer -peer exchange and information exchange that, that doesn't necessarily come from, from the global level. Um, I'm, I I'm, uh, want to close, but I just uh, see that uh, Muma has included a comment requesting that we do just Quick summary in French, so bear with me just three minutes. Um, Momar Aminata, je vois qu'il y a certains d'entre vous qui sont francophones. Uh, on vient d'avoir le webinaire en français uh, qui a été enregistré et puis qui va être partagé. Donc vous aurez exactement le même niveau de détail en français. Um, prière de partager le lien à, à plusieurs personnes, mais en gros, ce qu'on vient de, de, de faire, c'était un aperçu sur le GFF, donc qui est un mécanisme qui vise à, à croître le financement pour la santé de la, des femmes, des nouveau-nés, des enfants et des adolescents au niveau pays en faisant certaines choses. Un, en aidant dans la priorisation des interventions qui sont financées à travers le développement d'un d'un cadre d'investissement, ceci faisant à travers le, le développement ou, ou comment dirais-je, euh, le strengthening, je ne sais, sais pas comment dire ça en français, d'une plateforme multipartite pays qui développe le plan d'action et puis après aligne son financement pour ce plan d'action. Euh, et puis après, en regardant l'alignement des, des activités de ces parties prenantes, l'identification de manque de financement, euh, qui après est soumis comme, euh, comme euh, demande de financement, soit au mécanisme de financement en, en, en termes de grant, soit après à la Banque mondiale en termes de prêt. Mais euh, on était en train d'essayer de voir un peu comment la participation des jeunes s'est produite en, en regardant l'analyse qui a été faite sur quatre pays. Euh, et ce qu'on voit, c'est qu'il y, qu y a un an et un désir de voir les jeunes impliqués dans, ces, dans cette planification, euh, mais certaines difficultés liées au manque de représentation des jeunes sur les plateformes. Donc on est en train d'essayer d'encourager les jeunes à être représentés sur les plateformes. Après, le manque de capacité de, de jeunes, et, et donc là on encourage les jeunes à intégrer ces groupes pour pouvoir demander de l'aide euh, au niveau des, de, de, des capacités humaines, mais aussi des ressources financières. Euh, de trois, l'organisation des jeunes et puis le, le, le besoin de ressources financières pour, pour aider à ça. Euh, donc, ce qu'on encourage tout le monde là à faire, c'est d'essayer de se joindre au groupe de coordination de la société civile et en particulier au groupe des jeunes, de prendre contact avec les points focaux jeunes, les points focaux euh, des ministères de la Santé, les agents de liaison du GFF au niveau pays pour identifier les problèmes et voir pourrait contribuer et on a mis certains liens dans la présentation qui, qui, euh, qui, vous, qui vous orientent et qui vous dirigent dans la bonne direction. Je ne vais pas prendre plus de temps que ça, mais on enverra et la présentation en anglais et la présentation en français à tout le monde. I hope that covers it for the francophone colleagues. Just to reiterate that this webinar was hosted in French and we'll be sending um, that presentation out to everyone. Um, so with that, if we don't have any further questions right now, we're going to give you back a couple of minutes of your day and end a bit early. Um, just to note, we're all on hand all the time. So if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them over here and, and we'll field them and, and answer them. Um, wishing you a great day.
afternoon in Geneva and uh, morning maybe elsewhere in the world. Um, take care. <laughs>